Hey guys, welcome back uh, for another video tutorial. Um, today I'm going to be basically doing a part two on the simply supported beam tutorial. And part two is going to basically um, be a concentrated load instead of a uniformly distributed load that I did in the previous video. So, so it's gonna, we're going to keep the same boundary conditions, the same properties of the beam, so everything will remain the same. The only difference is how we apply the load, so instead of having a distributed load, we're going to do a concentrated load. And we're going to check it out on ANSYS, and we're going to check the results with the analytical results. So in order to do this, we're basically going to continue from where we left off from the previous project. So if you don't have this already set up, please go ahead and check out my first uh, tutorial on this. So I'm going to put the link down below. You can click on that, have a look at that first, and then come to this tutorial. So starting off from, from where we were before, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, you can probably want to either duplicate this or save it as a new project and uh, in this case I'm just going to call the simply supported beam and just add center load here just so we know that this is going to be a different project and I can go ahead and save that. Now in order to apply the center load we have to do some modifications towards the geometry so we're going to go ahead and open up the geometry and in order to apply a center load to the beam, we actually have to split the face in half of this beam because we need a line of where to apply the load. In this case, it's, it's ANSYS, we can't really choose where to apply the load unless you have like an edge somewhere in the, uh, along the beam. So in order to do that, we're going to go ahead and select the top face, click on this button here to make a new plane, hit generate. Next, in this new plane, we're going to right click and we're going to insert a sketch projection, hit apply, uh, sorry, hit select this face, apply, and then generate. Now what that does is basically extracts all the edges from this face. So now we have, we have access to all these edges here. So in this, in this sketch, we're going to go click on sketch, we're going to go to sketching, then we're going to go to modify, and then we're going to go here and click on offset and now with the edge uh, edge selector we're going to click on this right click enter and then we're going to click anywhere here and then hit escape so now we've basically offsetted this edge here but we need to dimension it so we're going to go to dimensions select this point select this line and then move the dimension tool out here and we know that it's half we know that the full beam length is one meter so here we're going to put half a meter or 500 millimeters. You can change this to anything you want if you want to do like an off-center load and you can put let's say 200 um, but in this case we're just going to put 500. Next what you want to do is go back into modeling choose tools face split choose the face that you want to split and then hit apply and then using tool geometry click on the edge selector click on this edge apply and then generate. So now what we have is uh, two faces. So we have we split the face of the top of this beam. Once you have that done, you can close it. Next, you can go ahead and double click on model and then update, click yes. And wait for uh, mechanical to load up. It should basically uh, now add the, uh, the split surface at the top here. So we're just gonna wait for that to load. So here, attach status, and now it's done. So as you can see here, we have our line, our edge created here, so we have two two faces here now on the side. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the mesh and this was again it was set to 20 millimeters so we're just going to regenerate that mesh. Now as you can see here the force has a question mark because we the force was previously applied to a full surface but now that changed so now it's asking us to reselect uh, where the, we want the force to be applied. So using the edge selector again, we're going to click on this no selection, choose this edge, hit apply. And the direction is correct and we're going to keep the same magnitude to keep things simple. So that's going to be our center load. And then next, uh, in the convergence, because we're applying a center load, um, you can get some singularities in this area, meaning there's very you know high stress that's not necessarily realistic and it could be hard to converge in this area because of this. So for the convergence criteria, I'm going to put uh, 2% and see if that works instead of 1%. And then we're going to go ahead and hit solve. And then here in the convergence plot, um, it, for those of you who forgot, it basically um, will, will refine the mesh until you get a, 
uh, allowable change of 2% difference between the previous stress result and the second stress result after the mesh uh, refinement. So ANSYS automatically refines the mesh and, and calculates the change. So in this case, it's actually it actually didn't st it actually didn't stop at uh, I would only want to do two iterations so I'm going to put this to 3% and then I'm going to clear data and then solve again make sure you clear the data or else it will continue from where it left off so put 3% and and then we're going to see the change here it should only take two iterations if not then it might not converge so you really have to be sure that you have uh, something that works here and also make sure again to clear the data before you rerun with this convergence. So as you can see here it converged after two iterations and the percent change between the first and the second was about 2.04 percent and the number of elements increased so the mesh basically uh, changed. So if I click here on the mesh show elements you can see here that the mesh was refined in these areas in order to get a three percent change between the first run and the second run. So here the equivalent stress is 117.87 and here in our uh, analytical we have 117.2. So we're actually very very close to the uh, analytical results and if we go ahead and check the, our directional deformation in the y-axis uh, we have a minimum of 2.33 millimeters and then here we have minus 2.33 millimeters. Again so it's matches very very closely with the uh, FEA results and uh, these are some other results that I got out so actually there was another thing that I didn't show you guys before and um, that was actually the reaction force so you can go here right click and go probe and go force reaction and then here we're going to choose fix support and then we're going to right click duplicate without results and then we're going to choose our displacement which is our other boundary condition that we applied last time and then we're going to go and evaluate those results so then here you have the force reaction results and you can see here that the y-axis it's 2500 newtons and if we look at the other one it's also 2500 newtons which is exactly what we expect as the as, as the shear which is which is basically the shear load or the reaction forces at each end is 2500 newtons so that's something I didn't sh show you guys before was how to do a reaction force and you can check the results for there so you have a very small uh, reaction force in the Z and X but th those, those are negligible and we can ignore those and the last thing I want to go over before ending this part two um, was how to basically refine the mesh without using this convergence tool so we can go ahead and delete that and we're going to go ahead and clear the data and then in the mesh we're gonna basically go ahead and put something like 10 and then we're gonna generate mesh and then we're gonna go ahead and solve so now we're, we're basically overriding this convergence tool and we're just applying a finer mesh on our own and there you have it it's 117 if we went even further and let's say we went to I'm not sure 8 millimeters and then we go ahead and run that will we still be at 117 let's have a look equivalent stress 118 so you can see now we're getting a bit above the analytical results and if we check though the um, the line plot that we did from last time we'll see that on the surface it's actually hits a maximum of 111 in the center so but however if you check this whole body it says 118 so you can go ahead and hit the max button you can see that it's on this node but if you look at the other nodes and you do a probe you can go ahead and see that here it's 118 here it's 111 you know 112 on this node 111 here so because it's a line a line and concentrated load you have some irregularities in this area so it's always best to take like somewhat of an average of the area so in reality you can probably just probe a few results and you can say okay well 112 118 and get an idea because sometimes when you have these 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 forces along edges it can cause some problems in the results so actually I could show you a good example of that 
and this here you could see here the equivalent stress here just dips you know that's in the center of the thing so that might not be so realistic because in reality the force is not applied on a line it's most likely applied on a small area so what we could have done is car carved out a small area here and then applied the force to that would have been probably more realistic than applying it towards a line so if you guys like that video um, please subscribe please like and uh, if you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section. And I hope that was helpful. And uh, feel free to check out my other videos. So see you next time.